Good morning. It's Tammy with um, Real Southern Woman. I am ready to start our Bible study this morning, so I'll wait on a few of y'all to come in. Um, you've probably been, some of y'all probably wondering why I haven't done a video on Color Valley Cooks this week. I've just been so busy. Um, Chris went yesterday and bought me two bookshelves to go in the dining room, and he put those together. And um, I wound up getting out a lot of my stuff and putting it out on there. And I had to, t I had to do it in two uh, different times of the day because I got so tired. <laughs> but anyway, I finished it up late last night. Um, and I still have a couple of things to hang up in there. But when I'm done, I'll try to show you all a picture of it. Um, hey, Donna, how are you this morning? Um, I need to go and buy Mama a gown today. I went to see Mama a couple of days ago, and she has outgrown both of her gowns. She has gained so much weight. So I got on to her. I was like, Mama. Um, but I think they've been taking her two desserts. They just did whatever she asks. And I, I got on to them. I said, yeah, she don't need two desserts. Because she don't do anything. She won't even get up and go in the lunchroom to eat. My mother likes to get out of the bed, get in her chair, and eat right there in her room. She is not a social butterfly. For one, a lot of the people there can't think well and don't, you know, they're not a whole lot of fun to talk to, so she would rather stay in her room. She thinks it's depressing to get out of her room and see all those sick people. And, you know, you can kind of see her point to a certain degree. Um, so I don't get onto her for that, but I don't think they should have given her two desserts because she drinks an insure in the morning. And uh, she likes to drink one at night. And I told her, I said, Mom, you can't do that anymore. Um, she had lost down to about 150 pounds uh, when we called in hospice a few months, quite a few months ago, I guess. Now, I just marked on my face. And um, now, I bet she's up to 200 pounds, y'all. I mean, at least 190. So she's got to um, slow down a little bit. <laughs> but I do have to go get her some gown. Anyway, I hope y'all are having a good day. We'll start our study. Um, I think I'm going to go to, I got coupons for Belks and Coles and Belks. All of their gowns, I looked online, they're like 30 bucks. And I think Coles had them for $19.99. You know, she likes the sleeveless ones that are kind of to the knee. So that's where I'm going to go. If any of y'all know of somewhere else, uh, let me know. Lots of times I try to get them at the discount stores like at Marshall's or Coles. I mean, not like at Marshall's, TJ Maxx, Ross, Bells, places like that. They have nicer ones for less. Um, this is such an easy lesson today, y'all. Yesterday was just so full of information because he piled it all on us at one time about uh, the main locations of the Old Testament. And we talked about the creation with Adam and Eden, the patriarchs, which were Abraham and Canaan, the exodus with Moses in Egypt, the conquest with Joshua and Canaan, Judges with Samson and Canaan, and the kingdom with David in Israel. And, um, and I think there's another couple. Yeah. We talked about the um, exile with Daniel in Babylonia, the return with Ezra in Jerusalem, the silence of the Pharisees in Jerusalem. That was a lot. So today it's really easy because now he's going to explain each of these eras. I don't know why he didn't do that in the beginning, but he didn't. So, because it kind of was like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of information for one lesson. But this one is about the creation era. And um, it's going to be really simple. He just talks about in the beginning how large our universe is and how large the galaxies are and how um, they're measured in light years, which are, he says, um, he got this out of the National Geographic. He says the light year is the distance light travels in one year at the rate of 186,282 miles per second, about six trillion miles. Um, he says that if you shot a gun, the bullet would travel around the world at the speed of light. The bullet would go around the world and pass through you seven times in one second. That's how fast it is. That's crazy. 
So what he was trying to do is show us how the universe is unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's hard to believe that it stays in place where it does. He says that, um, let's see, he says, um, there was one I, that caught my eye. Let's see if I can find it. And then we'll talk about the creation. He says, I should have underlined it. Just a minute. Just a minute. Well, doggone. He talks about the st uh, how, how much the stars weigh. Compare. Oh, here it is. He says, where a teaspoon of matter weighs as much as 200 million elephants. Is that not crazy? That a teaspoon of matter could weigh as much as 200 million elephants. All right. That is crazy. You see how crazy that is? You see how unbelievable the universe is? And it stays in place. And those of us that believe in God know that he created it and that anything's believable with God. Uh, and he makes things that are unbelievable on purpose so that we know that uh, they had to be created by him instead of a man because it wouldn't make sense. A man could never do something like that. So we're going to talk about the creation era, and we're going to start with the storyline, which is Adam is created by God, but he sins, and he destroys God's original plan for man. Okay? So that is going to be the storyline of that first era, which is creation with Adam in Eden. So it's going to be Adam was created by God, is created by God, but he sins, and he destroys God's original plan for man. So God's original plan was to have a relationship with man, was to be able to talk to man, walk with man. Uh, man was at that time perfect, very intelligent. He was made in the image of God. It says not the image as far as his physical image, but his image um, not a physical likeness, but a personal and spiritual likeness to God. Man was, uh, uh, he had his intellect, he had his emotions, and his will. He has a moral sense of right and wrong. He's a creative, I mean, he is a, cre yeah, creative being. There are some characteristics of God that are shared by man, and in this sense, man is created in the image of God. Okay? So, um, that was God's original plan. So if you ever want to know what the will of God is, the will of God was and is and will always be to have a relationship with us and um, that none should perish, perish, but have everlasting life. Those are the, the wills of God, okay? So if you want to know what the will of God is in your life, that's what it is. Uh, and that he would... Um, that you would walk with him, talk with him, and love him, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, we want it to be something big or something different or something about us when it's really all about him, okay? And what you can do for him as he, as he uses you in the world. Um, so it says that the second thing was the fall. There's the creation, the fall, the flood, and the tower, Okay. So these are all the things in the creation era. So you have man is created. That one's easy. The fall of man. Everybody knows about Adam falling in, the, in, the, uh, in Eden. It says Satan appears in the form of a serpent, and he lures Adam and Eve into rebelling against God, and um, they violated the one rule that God had given them. And as a consequence, they're driven out of the Garden of Eden. And then it's a cursed place. Okay. That's just terrible, isn't it? I mean, because the Garden of Eden was perfect. And, uh, I mean, they had it made. But, you know, their curiosity, curiosity killed the cat. Curiosity kills us all, you know. When Adam and Eve rebelled, sin entered into the world, and at that, all the pain and the evil and all the suffering 
um, endured by mankind for all time can be traced back to that one act, um, which is called the fall of man. Okay, so then our third one is the flood, which was the judgment of sin. And this is what blows your mind when you when you first start reading the Bible. I mean, he creates this man, he creates a woman, he creates the world, he creates, you know, the animals, um, and everything's in harmony and beautiful. And then and then Eve is tempted, and she wants to be wise, like the serpent tells her. So she, so she eats the of the tr fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and then the fall begins. Well, when the fall begins, they're kicked out of Eden, and then the next thing that happens is the flood. And what's unbelievable is that the world could have been, in that amount of time, which was about several hundred years, it was so bad, y'all. And men were so bad. And y'all think men are bad today. I think it was a lot worse then. Uh, because it was so bad, God was ready to destroy them, every one of them. But he, there was only eight people who were willing to live in a righteous relationship with him. Noah, his wife, and three sons and their wives. And they are saved. Uh, the judgment of sin is, is uh, given as the, in the flood, okay? But we all know that Noah builds an ark and his family are saved from that. And God, it says, so judgment was for the sin, Okay, it says that God performs a surgery on the human race, cutting out the cancerous tissue, as it were, and leaving behind the healthy tissue to restore itself. And he does this by sending a worldwide flood, which destroys mankind, except for Noah and his family, who are saved on the ark. So most everybody knows the story of Noah and the ark, but um, I don't know that we really think about uh, how... Um, Terrible the world must have been for God to want to destroy it. Um, you know, we all just want to think about the good things and all the animals going into the ark and how they, you know, waited for the dove and all that. But think about what God did there. It was a big deal. So then after that, Noah and his family live and they multiply. And, and it says that the tower was the beginning of the nations. It says that uh, God's post-flood mandated man, he wanted them to spread out, okay, populate, subdue the whole earth. And instead, in direct disobedience, they stayed in one place, and they all started uh, building a monument to themselves called the Tower of Babel. And so it says that God causes a large congregation of people to begin speaking in different languages. And when he did that, he did it so that they couldn't communicate anymore. They couldn't continue to build the tower. And not only that, they couldn't communicate with each other, so they all spread out. And that um, dispersed, the four, uh, dispersed all the people to the four corners of the earth, and, from, and it forms the beginning of the nations of the world as we know them today. Okay, so um, it says th that's pretty much it. That's our lesson. I mean, you the, the four things within the first creation era are um, the creation, the fall of man, the flood, and the tower. And um, then he gives you a self-test. Like, it's kind of like a match. You know, you match one um option to the description and then our summary here is oop, adam is created by god but he sins and destroys god's original plan for man okay and um and then all he wants us to do with our little tower is to fill in the first this is the first uh era which we all just went over it is creation now, if you don't have a book and you don't want to spend the money on a book or you don't have the money to spend on the book, all you got to do is make notes. So I thought for those of y'all, that's, that's easy. I mean, that's it. That's today's lesson. So I thought since some of you may not have this book and you may be actually writing in a book, since we went through so much information yesterday, 
Don't get discouraged if you didn't get it all down because we're actually going to go through every one of these eras and you're going to have time to study each and every one of them uh, a little bit more deeply. So if you want to, um, I'm going to name the main eras of the Old Testament. And if you'll just write at the top of your paper the main eras of the Old Testament and number them, um, then each day when we go over them, like today was the creation era, you can make additional notes underneath that. And that way you don't feel like you have to have the book because you don't have to. Um, so let's just tell, I, I want to name them all for the ones that just want to write it down today and, and don't want to uh, have to spend the money on a book. That's fine. So you've got number one, which is creation, which is the one we did today. And each of these in, are called eras, E-R-A. Um, each have a figure, a location, and a storyline. Okay, so write down... Um, Write down era, and I'm going to name them for you. And then leave enough room beside them that I can tell you who the person is and the location is, okay? Um, the creation, of course, was with Adam and Eve. And that location was in Eden, and that's what we study today, okay? The second one is patriarch. If you don't know how to spell that, it is P A T R I. A-R-C-H. It's kind of like spelling Patrick, but stopping in the middle of it. P-A-T-R-I and then Arch. A-R-C-H. Okay? Um, that is going to be um, Abraham. Okay? The third one is Exodus. E-X-O-D-U-S. Exodus. Which is Moses. The fifth one, oh, the fourth one is conquest, C-O-N-Q-U-E-S-T. And that one is, um, I want to make sure I don't give something to y'all wrong. Wait a minute. I think it's Joshua, but I want to make sure. Yeah, it's Joshua. Let me just turn to this page and make sure I do it right. The next one is so that's Joshua, J-O-S-H-U-A. The then one, two, three, four. The fifth one is Judges, J-U-D-G-E-S, with Samson, S-A-M-S-O-N. Six is Kingdom with David. Those two are easy to spell, aren't they? Seventh one is Exile, E-X-I-L-E, -E, with Daniel. And then there's the return with Ezra, E-Z-R-A. And then the last but not least is silence. And that is the Pharisees. Let me spell that for you. P-H-A-R-I-S-E-E-S. -E Pharisees. So each day we will be going over each era. And today we covered... The creation with Adam in the Garden of Eden. We learned about the uh, creation, the fall of man, the, um, look, I'm already forgetting what, the creation, the fall of man. What was our third thing? Woo, y'all gonna see how my mind works. The, the flood. <laughs> And then the tower. I just wanted to go straight to the tower. But you got to have a flood first, don't you? Um, so that's how what we talked about today. The creation, the fall of man, the flood, and the tower. So under the word creation era, you've got four main points, major events that happened in that era. Creation, the fall of man, which is Genesis. If you want to write this down, you can read them today. Creation was Genesis 1 and 2. The fall is Genesis chapter 3. The flood is Genesis chapter 6 through 10. The tower is Genesis 11. Okay? And that's it. I will um, talk to y'all tomorrow. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. Help these women as they go about their day. Um, 
I pray that you would keep us all safe and keep us all in the in good spirits and uh, help us shine our light. Sometimes that's really hard if we get frustrated or angry. And I pray that uh, we would, you know, be try to be more aware of our um, attitudes and hearts today. Um, we just thank you for the study. And again, we thank you for Max Anders. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And we will see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. And for those of y'all that watch later, thanks for coming in and seeing, seeing us later. Bye. I love you all.